Welcome back. Now, more than 17 million Mozambicans are expected to elect a new president in the general election today. The presidential and parliamentary elections marks an end of President Felipe Nuse's uh, two-term tenure. Now, the governing party, Frelimo, has fielded a new candidate in Daniel Chapo. Osufo Momade is the presidential candidate for the opposition, Renamo. But to help us uh, take a look at the significance of these elections and also who the other uh, parties are vying for the presidency and a win in these elections. We joined virtually now from Maputo by political analyst and media scholar at the Center for Media Studies, Egidio Vash. Uh, thanks so much for your time this morning, Egidio, and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much for having me. So let's just start uh, by looking at uh, how Mozambicans are feeling about the elections today and, of course, the run-up to these elections. What are people saying? Well, thank you very much. Um, with some excitement, uh, as there are new candidates into play, Frelimo has just, as you may, well mentioned, um, has indicated Daniel Chapo uh, to run for the presidency. And then you have another candidate, which, who is Venato Mundani. So these are the starters. Uh, for the first time, they are contesting this problem, uh, but uh, they have just e introduced some very innovating uh, elements as uh, Daniel Chapo is uh, the youngest of the of the four candid presidential candidates and and, and, and Osuf Mamade uh, is running for the uh, second time uh, uh, as, as Renamo party leader. Well, the excitement is exactly there. Uh, 17 million is uh, uh, the registered uh, uh, voter, but we do expect that up to 60% or 70% uh, might turn in uh, to voting, uh, uh, to voting <coughs> to the polling stations. As for the these first uh, 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 moments, the polling stations have just opened nationwide uh, 15 minutes uh, ago, and uh, as usual, um, uh, in the mornings, people tend to flock into their numbers to the polling stations. But then, uh, during the course of the day, we could we could see uh, like almost empty uh, polling stations. And towards the end of the day, people will, will, will come uh, back uh, to uh, for their last minute uh, of vote casting. So this is how for now uh, I can say. Uh, as for the international observer, observers, we have almost 400 international observers. Uh, be, of, of which 46 from the United States of America and 160, uh, almost uh, 170 from the EU and other um, uh, 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 other parts of the world, including SADC, obviously, and African Union. Uh, and uh, more than 7,000 uh, national observers. So uh, as far as I know, the National Electoral Body, uh, as well as the uh, National Electoral Management uh, uh, Body uh, say uh, and make sure that everything is in place, on place, uh, for the good start of these uh, of these elections. Uh, President Newsy has casted already his vote, uh, as well as other three candidates. And as you know, the Frelimo one, the Frelimo candidate will cast his vote uh, in Nyambane, as he was previously governor of the province of Nyambane. But the other ones. Venant Mondani and Lutheran Mang from MDM and Podemos uh, already also cast their votes in Maputo. Now, interesting because uh, Daniel Chapo um, is uh, someone who, as you said, uh, young, charismatic, 47 years old. And uh, this is, of course, uh, the first time that Filimo has fielded a candidate who was born after independence. But looking at those uh, challenges, uh, the three other candidates that you spoke about, um, again, just uh, very briefly, in a nutshell, a uh, brief background about each one of those. Well, uh, starting from uh, Daniel Francisco Chapo uh, uh, of Frelimo, uh, he is a lawyer. Uh, he was previously uh, successfully uh, district administrator and provincial governor uh, uh, in the north and in the south region. He was born uh, in the central region, uh, central province of Sofala. Uh, also, Mamari uh, is a Makua from Nampula, northern region. Um, he, as you know, was succeeded Alfonso Dakama. Uh, and uh, was re-elected uh, in national, uh, I mean, in in, in the in Renamo Convention as the uh, uh, re to stand for for these presidential elections. Uh, Lutero Mango inherited his brother's 
uh, MDM party uh, uh, following uh, uh, David Simango's death uh, back in 2020. Uh, and Venas Mondane um, uh, defected from Renamo recently and is a former uh, uh, MP uh, for Renamo and also represented MDM back uh, years ago. So in terms of uh, real practical uh, public administration experience, uh, uh, definitely uh, Daniel Chapo is, uh, is ahead. Uh, but uh, Venas Mondane is really also very, very popular among uh, young people. Uh, especially, especially from the, uh, the uh, uh, urban areas. Uh, Renamo's uh, 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 strongholds uh, are definitely stable here, uh, and they have known no major changes uh, since 2019 elections. So we do expect that Renamo's uh, 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 leader does not suffer much in terms of voting, uh, compared to the last time, um, to the 2019 elections, as its base is more or less stable. Here we can see that uh, MDM and Frelimo might suffer some shift in terms of more or less votes, taking into consideration the stiff uh, rivalry uh, and the stiff competition between these two candidates, namely Venas Mondlane and, and, and Daniel Chapo. But there's one thing here. Uh, all three opposition leader, uh, leaders or candidates did not uh, or almost ignore the southern region, and maybe for the region, uh, for, the, for a reason. First is that the whole four provinces in the south only contribute with 48 out of 20, 250, for example, members of parliament. So due to financial constraints that were transversal to every, uh, every party, they have just uh, uh, decided to focus on those specific strongholds and battlegrounds, mainly in the central and northern region. But Frelimo's candidate did actually, was the one who uh, campaigned in all 158 districts of Mozambique. Uh, uh, and this is, and this is maybe, this is where the difference might come, might come from. But uh, in terms of outcomes, I do not expect much shift. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Prelimo's candidates are expected to win, uh, both in parliament uh, as well as in uh, 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 the presidential race, but we need to wait and see uh, the outcomes because, as I said, uh, three key elements here which will dictate the outcome will be voter turnout. So, the higher voter turnout, bad news for Frelim. Mm. Um, the second will be uh, uh, to, to, to wait and see how Venanso Munlan, who is actually the third presidential candidate, and to, to what an extent uh, his, he will be uh, either a kingmaker or not. And the mm. third may be scenario, and this is the worst one, maybe what might be a runoff between uh, uh, Daniel Chapo and Venastro Mondlane, actually. It's, it's, it's going to be an interesting one, uh, given that uh, Mondlane, um, you know, uh, uh, seen obviously as a rising star in Mozambican politics and um, a former member of Renamo. And it's going to be interesting to see whether that actually splits the vote uh, there uh, between himself and um, 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 uh, Momade. But... Before we go, uh, I just need to quickly ask you, because regardless of what happens, there's the insurgency in the north that whoever wins will inherit, whether it's uh, still incumbent uh, Frelimo or anyone else. And Mozambique also grappling with a myriad of other challenges. There's the insecurity in the north. There's the economic issues. There are climate shocks. Uh, the biggest challenge, perhaps, is that the new president, whoever they may be, will be inheriting the 62% of the population that live in extreme poverty. We only have about a minute. Um, if you could quickly just talk to that particular issue. Yeah, most, actually, most, the, the, the key issue here might be the security one. Uh, but the good news was that all uh, uh, political candidates, our presidential candidates, did campaign nationwide uh, and specifically in the North. So that is also a clear sign of how stable things have become compared to 2019. 
uh, the challenge would be maintain that and maybe uh, imp better improve that because terrorism you can actually eradicate it uh, in, a, in, a, in a decade. It's, uh, I've, ne I've never seen it anywhere. Uh, even in Kenya, for example, or in Uganda. So we are all prone to, to these attacks. As to development, definitely it's a challenge. I don't think that the incoming president would make it uh, to, I mean, to, to have this extreme poverty in, 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 in five years or not. It's a real developmental past. We need uh, international support, as you remember, uh, mm. due to this uh, 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 the so-called uh, illegal debt, tuna bonds uh, scandal. We lived in Mozambique almost 10 years with no international assistance, and more importantly, with no international uh, access to international markets. All right. So stabilizing the macroeconomic scenario will be also very, very important for both security and developmental agenda. We have to leave it there, Gideo, but uh, we obviously will be checking back in with you throughout the day. Thank you so much for your insights there. Gideo Vash is a political analyst and media scholar at the Center for Media Studies, unpacking the importance of today's general election in Mozambique and also giving us a bit of a sense of who the main candidates are.